Tom, like so many of us, was a wounded healer. Out of Tom's woundedness and his real sense of oneness with creation came an ability to be present with patients in their moments of pain and suffering. He was clearly one of the spiritual healers among us. Once Tom found out his diagnosis and his prognosis, he said, and I quote, the battle is for me to have as much time as I can to die well. I grow up, I want to be a tree, want to make my home for the birds and the bees and the squirrels. They can count on me, D-Mutter. I grow up to be a tree. I went to see Dr. Peter Hall, who I admire and respect, and uh, he said to me, Tom, you have metastatic cancer in your lumbar spine, and I don't know where it's from, and we need to get busy. One of the questions I asked him, which he didn't want to hear, and I knew, was I said to him, I said, Peter, I'm going to ask you the impossible question. You know, and uh, I know you don't want to answer it, and that in some ways whatever you say to me is meaningless, but I need to know what's your prognosis for me. And he said to me, less than a year. And that was important for me. And of course, I'm in shock. When I asked him for, the, for that particular kind of early prognosis, he gave it to me. And that just was so important for me, just in terms of trust. Now, all the way through this, because of the data that I've been getting, I have known that this is a terminal disease. And being cured of it has never been an option. And nobody has ever held that option out to me, for which I am absolutely grateful. My final decision was not to have the chemotherapy, because I was fighting for every bit of quality life that I can have. Do you have Kelly, um, Kelly's number? And the first thing I did was started sending out word that I needed help. You know, I'm coming over to, to see some folks. I went on the internet and I just sent out word that I had just received this diagnosis and I needed support. And I called people whom I love and let them know that I needed their help. I called my children. <laughs> All of whom were here within almost a day. One lives in New Mexico, and one lives in northern Michigan, and one lives in Boston. And they were just here. But it doesn't need to be plugged in, because that's only for the fancy junk that this one does, right? Right. And it was one of the most important things I did, because one of the most dangerous places that a person can get into when, they've have, when they're going through this is to be isolated. It is absolutely terrible to let yourself get isolated at the time in your life when you need people more than any other. Dear Tom, it was so good to hear your voice, to talk with you. I felt that I had received a wonderful present. I have held you in my heart all this time and have not spoke, we have not spoken together. I have only known the bare outlines of what has happened in your life. It's, it's letters like that that let me know in spite of all my resistances that I've done a good job. It makes me so happy. You ready? Ready when you are. Okay. Up. You know, the tables are turned with my kids. And what's happening is they are taking care of me. And 
some fairly intimate ways that, you know, where I'm no longer able to do some things. And, and I have such an indelible understanding of how deeply they love me that being able to receive from them has kind of closed the circle. And to watch them and know that when I die, they're fine. And it's a wonderful thing. Pain is one reality of our life, which when we are experiencing, grounded in community and being taken care of, you know, we can deal with and we don't like it and it's there and it is telling us things about ourselves that we wish that it would quit telling us because we've got the message. I am protected in hospice and right now what's happening is I have a nurse who comes in twice a week, you know, checks in with me, you know, they don't give you any more help than you need or any less help than you need and right now I'm in a place where, you know, the network of people around me are doing fine. I'm taking uh, my pain pills and I'm taking a pill that keeps my brain from swelling. Palliation is a very important part of, of, of this and that's a word we use in medical circles to mean pain relief and comfort. So that's our goal. The most important one is the pain pills. Right. Because they have been keeping me relatively pain free. You know, and that's why palliative care and all that stuff is so important because it is a way to turn off pain. Suffering, on the other hand, overlaps with pain and is much, much, much worse. Suffering is a evil thing because what suffering is about is being in any kind of pain, physical or emotional, and being isolated. And suffering is about being unhooked from the, the incredible sport of community and people. Suffering can, is healed by loving care and by even in those times when it is so hard to open up to somebody else who can touch you, that is the cure for suffering.